Hello and welcome to Tower Fest 2015. I'll be your host today, Jay Miller, and today we have a medley of activities in store for you. We have snakes. Yes, we have snakes. We have birds. We have flying squirrels. But so much more, we also have music. We have interviews. We have pumpkins. We have fun. And uh, finally, we have the tower. So sit back and relax and see what 2015 Tower Fest has to offer. because it's in Ward 7 where I live. And like I've said before, Mark, uh, Ward 7 is the largest ward in the city because of this park. This is 750 acres of park that people can come, enjoy everything, sit under a tree, have a picnic. It's just a beautiful place to come. Are you have monthly meetings or, or quarterly meetings? How does that work and if people want to get involved and help as a volunteer? Monthly meetings, and it's, it's held at uh, Meadow Lane Park Department, the third Thursday of every month. Today we are having kids paint pumpkins and the proceeds will go to the scholarship fund that we have for the high school. We give about uh, two to three scholarships uh, every year for about $500.
it's really easy to join and become a part of it. Sort of when you see an organization doing something, you might get like sort of uh, put off that you might not be able to become a part of it, but it's really easy to become a part of it and help your community. At Brockton High, we have a key club that you just go to the meetings, you show up at the meetings, and you essentially become a part of it when you uh, keep attending the meetings. It's awesome to see all the kids up here, see the, how much fun they have, and it's it's just it's good to have everyone together. I would like to send an open invitation to each and every person out there to please become a member of the Brockton Kiwanis. The Key Club is over at the high school. They have lots of members and they outnumber the Kiwanian members. You are seeing three quarters of our club right here. We need help and we can do a lot more. This is a nice event for the community, but we can do bigger and we can do better. So please get in touch with us. My phone number, and I will give it out publicly, is 617-285-9887. Please call me, please become a member. Tower Fest! shy. We got to decorate our own pumpkin and now we're going to go and see if we can get some flowers out of the flower. The garden club is getting, um, passing out daffodils so we're going to go get a daffodil to plant in our garden this year. Okay, good job. But today is, is an exceptionally great day. The, we the weather is, is phenomenal and uh, it's great to see the people of Brock and come out and enjoy the gem that is DW Field Park. Zima, and Zima is an umbrella cockatoo. Um, she is a rescue animal, so she we basically got her. In a, in a, it was a bad situation. There was a, a house foreclosure, and the people left, and they left 40 birds in the house, and she happened to be one of them. And she has always been just such a sweet bird. Um, of course, we didn't know anything about her when we first got her, so uh, we didn't even have a name for her. But she did two things. She would say hi in a very sweet voice, and she would cough. And because she coughed, we took her right to the vet. And the vet said, oh, she's not coughing. She's mimicking a human cough. So uh, that is actually how she got her name. We found out that the woman who owned her before was a heavy smoker. And because she coughed, Zima picked it up, and Zima would cough too. So we named her Zima, which is short for emphysema, <laughs> which is how she wound up with, the, with her name. All right. What do you think, Zima? Hi. This is why they call them an umbrella cockatoo. These are indigenous to Indonesia, but of course she was born here in the United States. Um, they don't import parrots anymore, uh, which is a good thing, which means they're all born in captivity. And we like that. Creature teachers, none of our animals are actually born in the wild. We always get them from a source that uh, they're, they're actually born here in the United States. And that means that we're not taking any animals away from their natural habitat. And that's quite important to us. We don't want to. We don't want to uh, take the animals out of the wild. All right. Now this is Vinny, and Vinny is a woodchuck or a groundhog. 
and these would be from here. We see these pretty much all over the United States, but especially in the Northeast. What do you say, Vinny? You can do a little, little dance. Your banana dance, there you go. Okay, and there we are. Now obviously Vinny wouldn't normally eat bananas, he would eat greens and anything that you happen to have in your garden. Um, tomatoes, anything really. And they're called, there's a few different names for them. They call them a groundhog, they call them a woodchuck, and interestingly enough, yeah, they're groundhogs. Interestingly enough, the word woodchuck has nothing to do with chuck and wood, like we think. The word woodchuck comes from the Algonquin name for this animal. They call them a wooshock. So that's where the word woodchuck came from. They would love to eat flowers, yes, indeed. And they also call them a whistle pig. And I never heard the term whistle pig until I started doing programs with kids, and kids were calling them whistle pigs. So it turns out that um, the reason they call them whistle pigs is because they whistle. And it is a warning, and basically saying uh, that there's danger around and they should go away. Now, my wife thinks that we look way too much alike. We're obviously on the same diet too. But what he's doing now is he's getting as fat as he can for the winter. We don't hibernate him, but normally in the wild, this is an animal that would hibernate. And he would um, probably start maybe a month ago. But all summer long he is going to be eating and eating and eating because he needs to put on enough weight so that he can make it through the winter on the fat that he has stored up. See ya. Foundation is BLF. We're a volunteer-based nonprofit 501c3, and we've been around for about 20 years now. It was established by a wonderful gentleman named Arnold Schwartz, a World War II fighter pilot veteran, and he volunteered for libraries till he died at 92. Okay, uh, he was responsible for getting all the um, individuals in the city that were upset that the libraries might be losing the certification and closing and mobilized thousands of signatures and got city council to go up to the state house with him and several other people to secure the funding and keep the certification going for the Brockton Public Library Systems. We help support. Anything, the, what the library needs as far as library system, whether it's renovations, supplies, equipment, programming, and other items that might come, you know, movies, uh, books, different different items like that. Okay. Now, if you look at her, she is a flying squirrel. Her name's Holly. Holly does like to go in my pocket. You gonna go in my pocket, Holly? Put some in. You can't find it. Mm -hmm. my pocket. But if we look at her, we can see there's a, some really neat features on a flying squirrel. One is that flying squirrels, we can tell, are nocturnal. If you look at them, you can see how big her eyes are. They can't really fly. They should be called gliding squirrels and not flying squirrels. This is because they do have this weird flap of skin that goes from their front foot to their back foot. Can you see that? Yeah. That's called a patagium, and it allows her to jump and glide. So she's actually going to jump, open her arms and legs, and glide. But the really cool feature I see with her is not the patagium, but her flat tail. Can you see how flat her tail is? Yeah. It's a long, flat tail, and that acts like a rudder. So if she jumped out of a tree, and she's, let's say she's headed to another tree, and she looks in that tree, there could be an owl in that tree. You know what owls like to eat? Flying squirrels. So she, now she doesn't want to land there. She wants to land over there. And what she would do is she would take her tail and turn it, and that's how she's going to wind up going from one tree to another. All right. Yep. And everything poops. <laughs> now I know everything poops on me. That's what it does seem like. Yeah. It is. Yeah. She is adorable, isn't she? Look at the big eyes on her. Let's see if I can get her to turn around. Now the reason she wants to go in my pocket is because it's dark and warm in my pocket. We're going up. Let's do it.
flying squirrel. If you're a first time voter, what you're going to do is enter the, the precinct that you've been uh, instructed to go to. You're going to approach the end table, and the first thing they're going to do is ask you for your, your address. Once they find your address, then they will ask you for your name. At that time, they will hand you two ballots, one gray ballot and one white ballot, the gray ballot being the city ballot, the white ballot being the state ballot. Two votes, two ballots today. Thank you very Thank much. You. Just make sure you check out. You will take those over to the booth, vote as you wish, and then from there you'll proceed over to the, what's called the out table and you repeat the process that you did in, on the in table. You will give your address and then your name. Street address, please. 1 North Main Street. In the name? John Smith. Thank you. Uh, thank you for voting. And you just go over there to the ballot box and feed, you, feed the machine. And once you've done that, then you can proceed over to the ballot box where there'll be one of my staff people standing just to make sure everything goes smoothly for you. I request that you put the ballots in face down only because that way there can be no, no chance of anyone seeing your choices for uh, your, on election day. You need to read the headline, what you're voting for and what your, the instructions are. You either vote for one, as you see in this sample ballot uh, that we use to train people, and you, you have to do what it says, and you fill in the circle completely. We do not do this, and we do not do this, because the machine only reads what's filled in on the circle. And you can see over in this race, it's a vote for five, similar to our city of our councilor at large race, city councilor at large race, which is a vote for no more than four, which means that if you vote for any more than four, the machine is going to reject your ballot. So it's important that you know what you're going in to vote for and who it is you want to give your vote to and give no more than what is requested. And this is a vote for five, so we vote for five people. You are not required to vote for the maximum, but you cannot vote for more than the maximum. Doing. This is Shane Gooding, the owner, of, the owner of the Sound Lab in Brockton, Mass. David Vincent. Uh, I work for uh, the Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board in the Youth Works Division. Uh, today, I want to thank you guys for coming out and uh, celebrating this time with uh, the students for the, from the DJ Academy. <laughs> so today, we just want to recognize these students for their hard work and commitment. Uh, they were here for 12 weeks, well, more than 12 weeks, but uh, they were here throughout the summer uh, learning under Shane and his staff of how to learn how to be a DJ. And uh, pretty much they came in here without any knowledge or any skill of DJing. And uh, today I'm proud to say that they can rock a, a party if they have to. So, uh, so today what we're going to do is we're just going to have um, my executive director, Sheila Sullivan Jardim, come up and uh, speak about this, the collaboration and the partnership uh, between the Sound Lab and our organization. And then we're gonna also have Shane come up and uh, discuss uh, a little bit about, um, you know, his experience with uh, teaching a, a group like this. So um, without further ado, Sheila Sullivan and John. The uh, Workforce Investment Board, one of the things that we do is we look at different types of opportunities to train youth. And a lot of times we look at some of the more traditional aspects. We look at healthcare, we look at finance, we look at manufacturing. And then we all of a sudden had an opportunity to look at something a little bit outside the box. We find that none of our students fit into this square box 
deeply. And everyone has a little bit of something that makes them different. This program really allowed us to do something a little bit different. We met with Shane and, and I'm fortunate, I have a great staff, David, Vicki are here today, Keith, and they've really worked with Shane to develop a program that would benefit the youth and also work for the funding sources that we, that we have to report to. Um, this particular program is funded out of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and we have outcomes and you know, reporting requirements. So all of that gets wrapped into our desire to teach a program that might be a little bit different. We've had a great opportunity to work with Shane and with the Sound Lab to really determine how to best provide this cohesive program. So it has a little bit of job readiness, a little bit of this is what happens when you graduate, and a little bit of you know the hands-on, how do you mix, what is the production like, what does it really mean to be a DJ, things along those lines. So it was really a, a little bit out of our box, and as I see before me, there's um, a number of students who have successfully um, taken advantage of the, of the program. And we look forward to seeing you in, in a lot of the upcoming news and papers about your new positions and new opportunities that this might open for you. This is like a dream come true, honestly. Um, in 2013, we, I had an idea that kind of, I said, I'm a DJ and I wanted to be somewhat different in my career and I wanted to do something different in the community that needed some help. Um, and me and my team, we um, established the Sound Lab. And one of the focal points of the Sound Lab was to teach, um, to actually provide uh, a platform for DJs. So you can go to school for a production and other things like that, but there's not really a platform to DJ. Um, so we developed that, and then I teamed up with Youth Works and Chandler and our staff and David and everybody and we got these um, kids to come this summer. Uh, how you guys doing? Uh, I'm Tyler Steele. Uh, I did the Sound Lab program uh, mainly because I worked here the summer before. Uh, not this summer that was just here, but you know, before. And I really liked everything that Shane and all the other staff had brought to the table teaching me new things about, you know, whether it be DJing or whether in some cases recording and, you know, all these different things. I felt comfortable with the Sound Lab and I actually went to YouthWorks and I asked, I was like, can I go back to the Sound Lab because I really liked my experience there last summer. and. So sure enough, they said, we have this DJ program starting up. And I said, that's great. Um, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. New York is, is, is specifically the Bronx, is one of the founding locations of, of hip hop. And, and this genre of music started there. And I was proud to, to be born there. Um, actually, we lived in Marcy, which is where Jay-Z is from. And we moved out of there because of all the violence, whatever. Um, but being from New York, being Puerto Rican, um, Puerto Ricans were very much instrumental in the creation of hip hop, which is an unknown fact, or some true hip hop heads know that. Um, so I always gravitated towards hip hop, and, and I know the positivity that hip hop could, could do in young people, especially if it's constructive. Um, I teach, uh, I teach, I've been teaching for the last four years. I teach at Southeastern Special Education now. I have a background in history, um, so I taught history as well. Um, so I'm all about empowering young people, so when I learned that there was a, uh, a facility, a studio here in Brockton that um, promotes creation of music in a safe place, I knew that my son had to, had to become a part of it. And he was already dabbling in producing, so he came here, he took, he took the six week course, um, and to this day, he's 13 now, he still, he still produces. For anyone on a SoundCloud page, I'm going to do a little promotion here. Check him out. It's Jace Beats Productions. Jace Beats Productions. Um, and so, in addition to that, he's now my, my son because of the skills that he learned here and that he's harnessing. He's going to be uh, in, a, in a documentary that's being released next month called uh, Out of Bounds. It's being world premiered at Showcase Cinema. It's by Newbie Productions. So first we have Jose Osteen.
Anthony Oliveira. Hey. Tyler Steele. Another One North Main in the books. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the show. To learn more about Brockton Community Access, please visit our website at bcatv.org. You can also check out our YouTube page, youtube.com backslash the Brockton Channels on One Word. For everyone in One North Main, I'm Jay Miller, and we will see you around town.